Chapter 71 The people here are all sinful you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 71 The people here are all sinful Lu Sanyang looked at the black aura enveloping the village and said calmly, then I'll tell you the truth. All the people here are full of sins. Wei Shirlai's heart trembled. Lu Sanyang pointed at the river. There are many resentful souls in the river. Wei Shirlai almost staggered and fell. There were more than a hundred families in River Village. If they were all sinful people, did it mean there were also hundreds of resentful souls in the river? Wei Shirlai felt his chest getting heavier. When they arrived at Niu Lauda's house, Lin Zheng looked at Wei Shirlai. Sir, we're here. At this moment, it was one in the afternoon. Niu Lauda's door was closed. Officer Zhou went forward and knocked on the door, but no one opened it. Officer Zhou leaned against the door and said to Wei Shirlai, Sir, there's no one in the house. Wei Shirlai nodded. They have probably gone to work. Perhaps it was because there was too much noise outside, so the door next to Niu Lauda opened. It was a girl. She asked them. Are you looking for Auntie Niu? She took her daughter to the farmland. She won't be back for at least two hours. Officer Zhou walked over with a smile. Young lady, what's your name? Officer Zhou liked daughters very much. He would always remember that when Zhou Mingzhu was young, she felt soft and small in his arms. No matter how he looked at her, he liked her. When he saw the little girl, the smile on his face was gentle and loving. The little girl smiled timidly. My name is Niu Daya. Officer Zhou asked. Your name is Yaya. Are you the eldest child in the family? Niu Daya nodded. Wei Shirlai walked over and squatted down. Daya, does the daughter of your auntie next door cry a lot? Wei Shirlai was curious how a dead person could come back to life. He wanted to get to the bottom of this case and find out what happened. Perhaps it was because Officer Zhou and Wei Shirlai were very kind, Niu Daya smiled and replied. No, she is very obedient. She never cries. When I saw her last time, she even smiled at me. She's a good girl. Wei Shirlai smiled. How could a normal baby not cry? Just as he was about to ask something, Niu Daya pointed in a direction. Look, Auntie Nyo is carrying her daughter back. Wei Shirlai looked back and saw a woman carrying a baby in her arms and a basket on her back. Nyo Dalao's wife had already returned, so Nyo Daya returned to her house. Sir, is my mother dot in dot law still refusing to come back home? Wei Shirlai nodded. He looked at the woman and said, We're here today for something else. Can we go in and talk? Wei Shirlai stole a glance at the baby in the woman's arms who was sleeping soundly. No matter how one looked at it, it was clearly a living baby. Wei Shirlai looked at Lu Sanyang. Lu Sanyang was also looking at the baby girl. As if having sensed the presence of strangers, the child opened her eyes and looked at Lu Sanyang. She smiled at Lu Sanyang and opened her mouth, revealing his toothless gums. She was very cute. The woman smiled and looked at the child gently. Come in. My daughter likes you all very much. She keeps smiling. The woman opened the door and invited Lu Sanyang and the others in. The courtyard was small but clean and neat. The woman put down the basket on her back, then went into the house and brought out a few stools. We can talk here. I'll listen as I work. Lu Sanyang looked at the woman. Her legs were uneven, as if she was injured. The woman took a stool and sat down. She began to work on the pigweed she had brought back and chopped it up with a kitchen knife. Her daughter was in the cradle, quiet. She was not asleep. From time to time, she would giggle. Wei Shirlai looked at Lu Sanyang. Lu Sanyang had walked up to the woman's side and was looking at the child. This two-month-old baby seemed to like Lu Sanyang very much and kept smiling at her. 
Even the woman stopped what she was doing. Young lady, what's your name? My daughter likes you very much. Lu Sanyang smiled. My name is Sanyang. The woman smiled. What a nice name. Lu Sanyang looked at the woman. Can I touch her? The woman hesitated, reluctant. Eddie Edie however, the child had already stretched out her hand and giggled, as if she wanted Lu Sanyang to hug her. The woman nodded reluctantly. My daughter doesn't like strangers, but she seems to like you. You can touch her little hand. If she cries, you can't hug her. Lu Sanyang nodded. She reached out and held the child's hand. Seeing Lu Sanyang in such close contact with a child who was supposed to be dead, Wei Shirlai was shocked. Officer Zhou was nervous. Miss Lu. Lin Zheng was also worried. His hand was already on his sword. If anything strange happened, he would immediately draw his sword. However, nothing happened. Lu Sanyang smiled. I know, I know everything. Hearing what Lu Sanyang said, the woman was instantly alert. She stood up and pushed Lu Sanyang away. What are you mumbling about? The woman was like a hen protecting its chick, aggressive. Lu Sanyang looked straight at the woman. Why did you tell the officials about the crimes your husband committed? Lu Sanyang grabbed the child's hand. She could feel the anger and grievance which the child was transmitting. The fierceness of a father, the cowardice of a mother, and the unwillingness to die. As soon as Lu Sanyang finished speaking, the woman's pupils constricted and she revealed a terrified expression. Then, as if she had gone crazy, she rushed towards Lu Sanyang and tried to chase her away. Wei Shirlai shouted. Stop. The woman was very fast, and her reaction was unexpected. They thought that Lu Sanyang would be hit by the woman, but as soon as Lu Sanyang reached out and grabbed the woman's wrist, her body went weak and she knelt in front of Lu Sanyang. Chapter 72 Evil Origin You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 72 Evil Origin The woman trembled. Let go of me. Leave. Leave my house. Lu Sanyang looked at her and sensed her memories. Lu Sanyang said calmly, when your first child was born, she was a daughter. You were also disappointed. Because of her, you were neglected by your husband and mother. In law. You didn't treat her well either. You blamed her for not being a son. The woman shook her head in fear and tried her best to pull her hand out of Lu Sanyang's grip. However, no matter how hard she tried, she could not break free from Lu Sanyang's grip. The moment she was held by Lu Sanyang, she seemed to have lost all her strength. She could only let Lu Sanyang read her and unfold her like a piece of white paper. The woman wanted to stop Lu Sanyang from continuing. She looked at Lu Sanyang pleadingly and shook her head. Stop, stop. When your second daughter was born, your life was even more difficult. You had to do a lot of work to please your mother. In law and your husband. You were also very cold to your infant daughter. When your third daughter was born, you were so desperate that you almost smothered her to death with your own hands. You hated her so much. Your eldest daughter was beaten up by your husband. You carried her back to bed and went to work. When you came back, you saw him stifling her with a pillow. You just watched and pretended that you didn't see anything and went to work. Later, your mother. In. Law said that your eldest daughter was sick and died of it, and you convinced yourself that it was the case. You only had two daughters left. You just have to have a son, and then everything would be fine. When the fourth daughter was born, you were numb. When the fifth daughter and the sixth daughter were born one after another, you were already in despair. When the second daughter died, you took a look. You knew that she had also been smothered to death but you still didn't say anything. You even thought that it was good that they died. You never wanted to report it to the authorities. In any case, they were your own daughters. No one would know how they actually died. When the sixth daughter was killed, your heart started to ache. 
you wanted her to live. When the seventh daughter was born and you knew it was a daughter, you felt that God was punishing you. You knew very well that you were guilty. You wanted this daughter to live, but you didn't know that he, who didn't like daughters, would kill the child on the spot. You count out and begged for mercy, but it was completely useless. The woman was already lying on the ground like a pile of mud. She was like a dying fish, breathing heavily with her mouth wide open. Lu San Yang had already let go of her hand, but she still felt that she couldn't move. Her heart hurt so much that she was about to die. She wanted to curse and refute, wanted to say that she had her reasons, wanted to accuse Lu San Yang of slandering her, and even wanted to hit her. However, she could not do it because everything Lu San Yang said was true. She was guilty, she was guilty. She clasped her hands around her throat and looked at Lu San Yang for help, hoping that she could help her. Wei Shirlai and the others were shocked. Lu San Yang said that the man killed seven daughters with his own hands, but the seventh daughter somehow survived. The woman protected her seventh daughter well and seemed to love the child, so they thought that the woman was the victim and that she was the most innocent. Dot but now, they were furious. Why didn't she report it to the authorities when she saw her husband killing her daughters? Seeing the woman struggling in pain on the ground, no one could sympathize with her. Lu San Yang reached into the cradle and let the child grab her hand. She died on the day she was born. She was smothered before she could cry out. After the man left, you held her in your arms and your heart ached. Only then did you realize that you had given birth to seven daughters and none of them had survived. After seven births, your body was not what it used to be. You were afraid that you would never be able to give birth again. You thought of the old cow at home. Back then, she couldn't give birth to calves anymore and couldn't work, so she was mercilessly sold by your husband and killed by a butcher. You were afraid that you would end up like the old cow. You kissed your dead seventh daughter over and over again. You wanted her to come back to life, to live, at all costs. I feel that at that moment, your spiritual power was very strong, which brought your dead daughter back to life. You were overjoyed. You thought that God must have heard your thoughts. You believed that God finally opened his eyes. You could even sense your six dead daughters. You cried to them, telling them that the one who killed them was their father. They died at the hands of their own father and were resentful. Then you started to tell them to take revenge on their father. Lu San Yang smiled at the child and retracted her hand to look at the woman. The woman had already recovered from her despair. Her eyes were extremely sinister. That's right. I was the one who asked my daughters to kill him. Ha 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 ha, who would have thought that there was really a god in this world? Everyone can become a god. When the time comes, my six dead daughters can be revived and we can all be reunited. Lu San Yang looked at the woman. Do you know what price you have to pay to revive the dead? Your seventh daughter absorbed your lifespan to revive, and your first six daughters have been dead for a long time. How many lives have to be taken to revive your daughters? The woman sneered. There are so many people in this world. A few lives lost won't make a difference. My daughters are right beside me. Can you feel them? They told me of your arrival. That was why I came back from the farmland. Little girl, you're so young. How can you know my pain? Ridiculous. How can a dead person be revived? It's impossible. Wei Shirlai was trembling with anger. This woman actually wanted to revive her six dead daughters. This was unacceptable and immoral. His mother raised him in hardship and was not able to enjoy a day of good life. This was also his lifelong regret. However, he would never use someone's life to revive his mother because it was immoral and he would do everything to stop it from happening. I don't care. No one can stop me. The woman roared. She only wanted her daughters to come back to life and become a god, along with her, escaping the suffering of living beings. She didn't care how many people would die because of that. Chapter 73 
You were wrong you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 73 You were wrong the woman looked a little terrifying at this moment. There seemed to be a force on her that shocked Wei Shirlai and the others. Lu Sanyang sighed softly and said, You're wrong. Lu Sanyang looked up at the black aura that was enveloping River Village. When she looked at the woman again, she could not help but show pity. You were wrong from the beginning. One wrong move and everything would go wrong. It was wrong to allow her husband to kill her daughters, and it was even worse to let her husband get away with the killing. Now, it was terribly wrong to want to revive her daughters. Lu Sanyang said to Wei Shirlai, Sir, many people in River Village might have killed their children. They have committed a grave sin and caused a vicious karma. Wei Shirlai calmed himself down before replying. Miss Lu, I already know what to do. However, Wei Shirlai felt a headache coming on. The case was so big that it would definitely alarm the higher dot ups. However, when he thought of the young children being murdered mercilessly, Wei Shirlai was determined to find justice for them. He had to put an end to such a thing. Even if it would cause a huge commotion after he reported the case to the imperial court, his conscience told him that he had to do it. No one had the right to kill a newborn. Abandonment and abuse were both crimes, let alone murder. Just because they were her children didn't mean she could do whatever she wanted with THM. The child in the cradle smiled at Lu Sanyang and held her hand tightly. Lu Sanyang's eyes softened. Good girl. Lu Sanyang closed her eyes and chanted softly. These scriptures seemed to be engraved on her consciousness. She only needed to open her mouth and they would flow out naturally. Coming out of Lu Sanyang's mouth, the scriptures seemed to have enormous power. The child giggled, then slowly closed her eyes. Wei Shirlai and the others did not see that the other six girls were also there. They knelt beside Lu Sanyang with smiles and relieved expressions. Wei Shirlai and the others could not see the girls, and neither could the woman. She seemed to have gone crazy and pounced on Lu Sanyang, trying to push her away. However, before she could even touch Lu Sanyang, she was grabbed by Lin Zheng. The woman knelt on the ground. No, don't leave me, my dear daughters. I'm wrong, don't leave me. I already know my mistake. However, no matter how hard she tried, she could no longer hear anything. The woman's spiritual power summoned them again, but in fact, they were no longer willing to stay here. Lu Sanyang had Buddhist light on her body. Others could not see it, but the dead girls could see it. They moved close to Lu Sanyang and hoped to be saved by her. They yearned to be pacified by Lu Sanyang. After Lu Sanyang finished chanting the scriptures, the sun, which was covered by dark clouds, came out. The sunlight shone on her and lingered around her. She was like a Buddha who had entered the world, saving everyone from pain and poverty. Wei Shirlai opened his mouth. He thought that he was hallucinating, but when he saw that Officer Zhou and Lin Zheng who were equally stunned, he knew that it was not an illusion. They're gone. They're all gone. The woman murmured. Lu Sanyang stood up. The woman ran to the side of the cradle and saw that the fair and cute child had already closed her eyes and was no longer breathing. Her bruised face was actually rotting bit by bit. There was a stench, but the woman didn't seem to smell it. She took the child out of the cradle. Don't go. Don't leave mother. Come back. The woman burst into tears. She already knew that she was in the wrong. Why did the heaven still have to be so cruel and make her lose her daughter again? The woman looked at Lu Sanyang angrily, wanting to cut her into pieces. It's you. Why did you do this? Why did you take my daughter away? Lu Sanyang said slowly, because they are already dead and don't belong here. They didn't belong here in the first place. It was the woman's spiritual power that called them back and forced them to stay, but they didn't belong here in the first place. If they were forced to stay, what would happen? If they stayed, thousands of lives would be taken away. 
Lu Sanyang naturally could not allow that to happen. The woman looked at Lu Sanyang viciously and held her chest. Do you know you just took my heart out of my body? I hate you. I curse you to die a horrible death. Seeing that the woman was so unreasonable, Officer Zhou couldn't stand it anymore and said to the woman, Miss Lu only did what has to be done. What about you? You watched your daughters getting killed by your husband but didn't do anything. How dare you curse Miss Lu? No one took your heart. You did it yourself. I don't think you deserve pity at all. You're hateful. You never think that you're at fault. You believe it's all someone else's fault. Actually, you're the most hateful person. Why did your husband keep smothering your daughters? It's because you allowed him. You didn't even love them yourself. How could you expect him to love them? Damn, it's so infuriating. Officer Zhou pointed at the woman indignantly. However, the woman did not seem to hear what he said. She hugged the rotten and stenchy dead child and looked at Lu Sanyang viciously. Wei Shirlai frowned and ordered. Take her away. Lin Zheng quickly escorted the woman out. The woman did not resist and followed him with the child in her arms. The commotion in Niu Lauda's house naturally attracted the neighbors. When the door opened, many villagers outside were sticking their heads into the courtyard to see what was going on. But they were instantly greeted by a horrendous stench. The stench made many villagers turn around and wretch. Officer, what happened? Why is it so smelly? Did Nyo Lauda's wife really kill him? I heard that there are a lot of handprints on Nyo Lauda's dead body. How did this woman manage to do that? Officer, what's so smelly? Wei Shirlai's face darkened as he shouted. Move aside. After leaving River Village, Wei Shirlai wanted to return to the town as soon as possible. He had to come to arrest all the criminals the next morning. Lu Sanyang stood on the bridge for a while before she left with Wei Shirlai. On their way back, Wei Shirlai couldn't help but ask. Miss Lu, what were you doing just now? Lu Sanyang smiled. Saving people. Dot. Chapter 74 don't ask, don't tell, don't talk you are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 74 Don't ask, don't tell, don't talk when they returned to the town, it was already dark. Wei Shirlai sent Lu Sanyang back before returning to the government office. Lu Sanyang only left a letter when she went out, so her family was very worried. When they saw her return, they were relieved. No one in the family asked why Lu Sanyang went out. They had formed a tacit understanding of not to ask, say, or talk. After dinner, Lu Sanyang returned to her room and continued embroidering. When Madame Wei came in, Lu Sanyang was embroidering under the candlelight. Madame Wei walked to Lu Sanyang's side. Sanyang, the date of Yin Yang's marriage has been set. Lu Sanyang put down the needle in her hand. When? Thinking of Lu Yinyang, who walked into the darkness with Lu Shun in her dream, Lu Sanyang sighed. After being reborn, she was different, and many things were different. This made Lu Sanyang understand that nothing was consistent. Anyone or anything could change. Madame Wei sighed. On the 12th of December, they said that if she married him early, she could take care of Lu Shun while he focused on his studies. Madame Wei felt a little pissed off when she thought about it. She had already told Madame Bai so clearly that her son Dot in Dot Law was not a good person, but Madame Bai did not believe it. When Lu Shun was injured, she even asked Yin Yang to go and take care of him. As soon as Lu Shun recovered, he set the date for the wedding. After everything was settled, this marriage was a done deal. Madame Wei had already reminded them. If she continued trying to talk them out of the marriage, they would really think that she was being salty. Therefore, Madame Wei did not intend to say anything else. There was no need to say anything else. This was their choice. Even if the marriage turned out to be a bad one in the future, they could not blame anyone. 
Lu Yinyang was a little younger than Lu Sanyang and would only turn 15 after the new year. Let's not talk about Yinyang. It's their decision. Madam Wei smiled and changed the topic. Your brother is getting engaged. Tang Yin is a good girl. It's definitely not wrong to marry her. A few days ago, she even asked her brother to catch river prawns in the river and send them over. When Madam Wei mentioned Tang Yin, she was beaming. Lu Sanyang also smiled. Then I'm going to buy some clothes and make a wedding blanket for my brother. In her previous life, Tang Yin was her sister. In law, she was really a good person. She gave birth to a few children for her eldest brother and came to visit Lu Sanyang a lot, worried that she would feel lonely. Lu Dalong was 17 years old. He would be 18 after the new year. Madam Wei smiled. Your brother will be very happy to receive the gift. Lu Sanyang leaned on Madam Wei's shoulder and said gently, Mother, you don't have to worry about me. Even though Madam Wei didn't bring up Lu Sanyang's marriage, Lu Sanyang could hear her thoughts, so she knew how sad Madam Wei was. Madam Wei held Lu Sanyang's shoulder and felt a lump in her throat. She almost cried, but fortunately, she managed to hold it back. Madam Wei did not ask or talk further, but she could not lie to herself about the fact that her daughter had already taken the path as a psychic. Madam Wei sighed. I'm not worried. I support you. You just have to remember that no matter where you are, this is your home. As long as your parents are here, your home is here. If anyone dares to bully you, I'll fight them to death. Lu Sanyang sobbed. Mother, you are so good. Mother's love was warm and sweet. It became a hard armor that protected Lu Sanyang from harm. At night, Lu Sanyang was sound asleep. In a daze, she heard many cries. The place she was looking at was River Village where she had visited during the day. Tonight, River Village was destined to be a sleepless night. It was already late at night, but the entire village was still brightly lit and filled with screams. The men who had been working for the entire day suddenly ran to the pig pen to eat pig food. They ran around on all fours, but they looked like they were in pain and shouted. Help, help. They looked like they were possessed. They broke down and shouted for help, while the women also shouted in fear. What's wrong with you? You can't eat that, after going mad for an entire night, they finally stopped. When it was almost dawn, Lu Sanyang saw many children running towards her. They fought to get close to Lu Sanyang and called her sweetly. Sister, sister, Lu Sanyang was like a light that they could not wait to touch. They were willing to follow her. At dawn, Lu Sanyang woke up and smiled. She did not need to go out. After breakfast, she embroidered at home. Lu Juer's marriage was coming up, and her elder brother was about to be engaged. She had to embroider a lot of stuff, so she naturally did not have the time. Wei Shirlai had already informed the capital of this case and was waiting for the news. River Village was a major case. There were not just one or two criminals to be arrested, but the entire village. Therefore, he could not make the decision by himself. Not only did he have to inform the capital, but he also had to increase the number of his troops. At the thought of what the villagers had done, Wei Shirlai was furious. He sent many messengers to the capital, hoping to get a reply as soon as possible. According to the laws of the Xia dynasty, Niu Lauda's wife and mother were both guilty and would be imprisoned for two to three years. However, Wei Shirlai was not satisfied with this law. He thought they needed to be sent into exile. If there was such a thing in Yong County, there must be similar cases elsewhere. Wei Shirlai wanted to make an impact. Even if it was just a small change, even if his efforts would be in vain, he had to try. When Wei Shirlai learned that all the men in River Village had gone crazy at night, he was stunned. The officer who brought back the news had a complicated expression. Sir, if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, would never believe that a sane person would run around eating pig food. Wei Shirlai came back to his senses. 
continue keeping an eye on the village. Report as soon as there's any news. People who could commit such a horrendous crime as killing their daughters were even less than a pig. The officer was worried that they were suffering from a plague. He thought for a moment and asked, Sir, these people are not behaving normally. I'm afraid something will happen. Should we quarantine the village, Nav OM? Chapter 75 Possessed Men You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 75 Possessed Men Wei Shirlai waved his hand. No need. I know what to do. Don't worry about these people. They were just suffering from the karma they deserved. Wei Shirlai already understood what Lu Sanyang meant when she said she was saving people. Those children who needed justice were now looking for it themselves. Sir, is it really okay to leave them alone? All the men in the village seemed to have been possessed. It was hard to imagine such a scene if they didn't see it with their own eyes. Wei Shirlai smiled. Nothing will happen. Just keep an eye on them. Don't enter the village without my orders. No one in that village was innocent, and every one of them had to experience the karma they deserved. Hearing Wei Shirlai's instructions, the officer left to pass down the order. Other than going crazy at night, the men in River Village were normal during the day. Only at night would they become a different person. They would eat pig food and do whatever animals did. It was as if they were possessed. They could not control themselves. The most terrifying thing was that they were crying for help. They were conscious and even knew what they were doing, but they could not control themselves. At night, they seemed to lose control of their bodies. After one night, every family in River Village started to hire Daoist priests to help them exorcise the evil. Granny Lee was hired by several families. Other than her, there were also some other Taoists. When they met, they smiled and greeted each other politely. After greeting each other, they went to look for the family that recruited them. Whether it was drawing talismans, ringing bells, dancing, or singing, each of them did their own ritual. The frightened men did whatever they were told. Granny Lee burnt the talisman into water and watched as the man drank it eagerly while thinking to herself. Ignorant man. When it came to exorcising the evil, there was no need to drink any talisman water at all. However, these people felt that after drinking it, there would be a layer of magic power protecting their bodies. They would fight to drink it, and would be unhappy if they were not given the water to drink. Granny Lee finished her ritual seriously before cautioning. As the saying goes, if you don't do anything wrong, you won't be afraid of ghosts knocking on your door. If you sincerely admit your mistake, you will be safe after seven days of fasting. Granny Lee could faintly sense resentment surrounding the village. Since she had taken the money from the families, she had to show them a way out. She visited several families and realized that the situation was the same everywhere. She did the same thing and instructed them to fast and sincerely repent. After leaving River Village, Granny Lee couldn't stop smiling. She had really earned a lot this time. However, she was also surprised by how weird the village was. In addition to the ritual, she also sold some peace talismans, which amounted to quite a substantial income. Just thinking about it made her happy. Granny Lee returned to the town and thought for a while before going to look for Lu Sanyang. Initially, she felt that Lu Sanyang would definitely get married. But now, for some reason, she had a reputation for being arrogant and apparently was not going to get married anytime soon. Lu Sanyang was very capable, so Granny Lee thought it was necessary to build a good relationship with her. Lu Sanyang opened the door and saw that it was Granny Lee. She smiled. Granny Lee, please come in. Granny Lee smiled. Sanyang, what are you doing at home? Lu Sanyang returned to the courtyard. Embroidery. Granny Lee walked over to take a look. How wonderful. She thought that Lu Sanyang's embroidery skills were exaggerated. Now that she took a closer look at it, she was awe. Stricken. From a distance, the patterns looked almost life-like. 
Granny Lee was even more convinced that Lu Sanyang was serious about not becoming a Taoist. With such embroidery skills, she could easily make a living. However, for some reason, Granny Lee felt sorry for Lu Sanyang. Granny Lee had been married before, but Lu Sanyang probably wouldn't have the chance. What can I do for you, Granny Lee? Lu Sanyang asked. Because Granny Lee was a psychic, Lu Sanyang would not be able to hear her thoughts without touching her. Most people were wary of strangers. Only by breaking through this layer of defense could Lu Sanyang hear people's thoughts. Granny Lee smiled. Sanyang, something strange has happened in River Village recently. Do you want to go and take a look and make a name for yourself? Lu Sanyang smiled. Thank you for your kindness, Granny Lee. I've already been there. Granny Lee was shocked. You've been there. Lu Sanyang nodded. Granny Lee smiled. Sanyang, you're very talented. If I ever offended you in the past, please forgive me. Lu Sanyang smiled. Granny Lee, don't worry. I won't get famous and I won't take away your job, that she didn't want to be famous either. Her best chance was to become an assistant for Wei Shirlai and help him investigate the cases. Most of the time, she would continue improving her embroidery skills and potentially open a shop or something in the future. Granny Lee looked at Lu Sanyang. She couldn't understand what Lu Sanyang was thinking at all. If she was so capable, why didn't she use her power to get famous? If she was famous, she would be rich. However, everyone made their own choice. Granny Lee smiled. It's good that you know what you want. I just want to be on good terms with you. Lu Sanyang smiled. Sure. There are many things I don't understand. I hope you can guide me sometimes. Granny Lee smiled. Of course, of course. After Granny Lee left, Lu Sanyang rested for a while before continuing her embroidery. She was embroidering clusters of peonies for Lu Juer. The blanket was spread out, and the lifelike peonies were blooming. After embroidering Lu Juer's, she embroidered one for her brother. There was still time. In two years, when she saved up some money, she would open a shop and make clothes. Knock, knock, knock. Someone knocked on the door. Lu Sanyang stood up, feeling a little disconcerted. Who was it? Chapter 76 I'll come to propose marriage tonight you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 76 I'll come to propose marriage tonight she opened the door and looked at Chu Yen, who was standing outside. She was at a loss. Chu Yen had changed into black clothes and his long hair was tied up with a cloth. He stood tall and looked at Lu Sanyang with his ink dot like eyes. Lu Sanyang only felt that he was too scary. She always felt that his gaze was too hot, making her feel uncomfortable. My parents are not at home. Come back tonight if you have something on. Lu Sanyang mustered her courage and closed the door. Chu Yen said, I'll come and propose tonight. Lu Sanyang closed the door with a bang. Ah, this lunatic. What did he say? She must be hallucinating. She would rather not marry than marrying someone so terrifying. Lu Sanyang was not in a mood to continue embroidering anymore. Chu Yen sighed and turned to leave. Anxious for no reason, Lu Sanyang kept pacing around the house. She tried very hard to recall who Chu Yen had married in his previous life. No matter how hard she racked her brains, she only remembered that he became the general of Dingbei in Yong County. Who was his wife? Lu Sanyang couldn't remember. In her previous life, she didn't go out a lot and was ignorant of a lot of things. The sky gradually darkened. Lu Sanyang rubbed her forehead. As far as she knew, Chu Yen was not married in his previous life. There were only legends of his life in the army, but there was nothing about his love. Chu Yan's words scared Lu Sanyang out of her wits. She lay on the bed and wanted to cry. When Madame Wei returned, seeing that Lu Sanyang did not cook, 
she went into her room and asked. What's wrong? Lu Sanyang couldn't bring herself to tell her mother what happened. She said with a smile, nothing, I'm just tired. Madam Wei's expression softened. If you're tired, rest for a while. I'll cook your favorite braised fish. Lu Sanyang nodded. When it was dark, Mr. Lu, Lu Dalong, and Lu Erlang returned. Madam Wei cooked very quickly and a fragrance came from the kitchen. Lu Sanyang had been on tenterhooks, but Chu Yen did not come even after dinner. She was relieved and finally heaved a sigh of relief. She went back into her room and lit a candle, prepared to start embroidering. Knock, knock, knock. There was a knock on the door. Lu Sanyang jumped up with fright and pricked her finger. Lu Erlang opened the door and said casually, Chu Yen, are you here to deliver the pair of tongs? Why didn't you come earlier? We've already eaten. Chu Yen looked at Lu Erlang. It's not done yet. Lu Erlang was a little speechless. Why did you come to my house then? Lu Dalong came out of the house. My parents are in the house. Please come in. As Lu Dalong invited Chu Yen in, he gave Lu Erlang a cold look. Chu Yen nodded at Lu Dalong. He walked towards the living room. Madam Wei and Mr. Lu were discussing the preparation of their eldest son's wedding. Since there was a guest, they stopped their discussion. However, Madam Wei and Mr. Lu were also a little puzzled as to what brought Chu Yen to their house. Chu Yen entered the living room and said to Mr. Lu and Madam Wei, Uncle, Auntie, I want to marry San Yang. With his mouth wide open in shock, Lu Dalong couldn't utter a word. Lu Erlang fell to the ground. He was shocked. The F asterisk CK. What the F asterisk CK did you say? Madam Wei was also stunned. Mr. Lu was also stunned. They did not expect Chu Yen to be so straightforward. After a while, Mr. Lu came back to his senses. Chu Yen, what did you just say? Madam Wei looked at Chu Yen and frowned. Chu Yen repeated patiently. I said that I want to marry San Yang. This is my betrothal gift. Chu Yen took out a wooden box and placed it on the table. Madam Wei and Mr. Lu felt their minds go blank. Lu Erlang was furious and was about to punch Chu Yen. Chu Yen, you pervert. How dare you lust after my sister. Chu Yen tilted his face to the side to dodge the punch. Lu Dalong pulled Lu Erlang away. Behave yourself. Madam Wei came back to her senses. Dalong, take Erlang out. Lu Erlang did not dare to disobey Madam Wei. He obediently let Lu Dalong pull him away. Dot Mr. Lu was a little silent. He looked at Chu Yen and then at the box on the table. What's this? Mr. Lu opened it and saw the banknotes. Madam Wei was struck dumb. Chu Yen said, if I can marry her, I will protect her for the rest of my life and never let her suffer any grievances. Madam Wei looked at the box of banknotes. This was more than 500 taels. Why did Chu Yen have so much money? Madam Wei looked at Chu Yen seriously. She realized that Chu Yen was really handsome. His eyes were a little cold but he was really good dot looking. He was much taller than her two sons. He was very quiet, but he was very sincere. This was in line with Madam Wei's standards of a son dot in dot law. Madam Wei did not like boys with a glib tongue. She liked boys who were sincere. Madam Wei took a deep breath. This is all you have, right? Chu Yen nodded. Yes. Mr. Lu frowned and did not know what to say. For a second, he almost agreed. At this moment, Madam Wei said, Chu Yen, my daughter is different from other women. Chu Yen looked at Madam Wei. I know. He continued. I saw everything she did in the Zhou mansion. Madam Wei was a little excited. You, you don't mind. Chu Yen shook his head. 
No, Madame Wei did not know what to say. The more Mr. Liu looked at Chu Yen, the more he thought Chu Yen was a perfect son. In law. Madame Wei looked at Chu Yen. She still felt that Chu Yen was a little too cold. Her daughter was gentle, and she was actually very incompatible with Chu Yen. But now, it was not a matter of whether they were compatible or not. No one dared to marry her. If people knew that Lu Sanyang was a psychic, they would not dare to marry her. Chapter 77 Don't agree, don't want to marry him you are listening at novel full audio. Chapter 77 Don't agree, don't want to marry him Madam Wei exhaled and said, Chu Yen, go back and wait for the news at home. She still needed to discuss with her daughter before making a decision. Chu Yen smiled. Sorry for disturbing you. I'll wait for the news at home. Chu Yen looked much more friendly when he smiled. After saying that, he turned around and walked out. Mr. Liu and Madame Wei looked at each other. Madame Wei muttered. When this child smiles, he looks compatible with our daughter. When he didn't smile, he looked cold. When he smiled, he looked like a gentle young man. Mr. Liu nodded. I think so too. He didn't even take this box. Madame Wei was also speechless. I'll put it away. I'll sleep with San Yang tonight and ask her what she thinks. Madame Wei walked into Lu San Yang's room. Lu San Yang was lying on the bed but she wasn't sleeping. As soon as Chu Yen arrived, she blew out the candle. She knew that Madame Wei had entered. San Yang, I have something to tell you. Make some space for me. Madame Wei took off her coat and lay down. Lu San Yang shuffled in a little. After Madame Wei lay down, she reached out her hand. Come, lie in my arms. Lu San Yang lay on Madame Wei's arms and said, Mother, don't agree. I don't want to marry him. Madame Wei had no choice but to swallow what she wanted to ask and said, Why? Chu Yen was quite a good man from all aspects. San Yang, tell me, is Chu Yen also a bad person? Madame Wei was thinking about the worst scenario. Chu Yen was tall and strong. If he really was a bad person, her daughter would only die if she married him. Hearing Madame Wei's worry, Lu San Yang quickly said, No, there was nothing wrong with Chu Yen. She was just afraid of him. She couldn't hear Chu Yan's thoughts. The moment Chu Yan was around her, she would be terrified, so she didn't want to marry him. She wished they had nothing to do with each other in this life. Madame Wei sighed. You just don't like him. Lu San Yang thought for a moment and nodded. She felt a little bad. She knew that Madame Wei wanted her to find a good husband. Lu San Yang also thought that if it wasn't Chu Yen today, she might have accepted the marriage proposal. However, as for Chu Yen, Lu San Yang only wanted to stay away from him. Madame Wei sighed. I won't force you, but think about it. Lu San Yang nodded. Okay. No matter how long she thought about it, she would still refuse. At night, Lu San Yang dreamed again. In the dream, all she could see was red, and she heard steady footsteps. Lu San Yang was extremely surprised. She was wearing a red bridal gown. She was getting married. Lu San Yang was shocked. Looking up, she saw Chu Yen in red smiling at her gently. Lu San Yang watched as he went to get two wine glasses and returned quickly. She was extremely nervous. He handed the wine glass to Lu San Yang with his slender fingers. San Yang, drink this and we'll become husband and wife. I'll never let you down. The fright snapped Lu San Yang back to reality. She jumped up in bed. Madame Wei was shocked and asked. San Yang, what's wrong? Lu San Yang was still in shock. Nothing. She just had an extremely terrifying dream. At the thought of what happened in her dream, Lu San Yang felt terrible. She desperately hoped that this dream would not come true. It was just a dream. 
Madam Wei yawned. Go back to sleep. I'll get up first. It was almost dawn. Madam Wei got up to make breakfast. Lu Sanyang was not sleepy, so she did not lay in anymore. She got up and helped Madam Wei make breakfast. With Lu Sanyang helping, Madam Wei decided to make ramen. After kneading the dough and waiting for it to ferment, Madam Wei began to prepare the seasoning, minced meat, red radishes, and green onions. She crushed the garlic, stir. Fried it with fragrance, and added the seasoning. After washing the pot and boiling the water, Lu San Yang went to mix some sauce. Madam Wei started to make the noodles. When Mr. Lu and the others got up, the noodles were just about to be put into the pot. Lu San Yang threw in the washed vegetables. Seeing that the noodles were cooked, Madam Wei scooped up the noodles. Then, she drizzled every bowl of noodles with meat sauce. It was simply delicious. After the meal, Lu Erlang was pulled away by Lu Daolong before he could speak. Madam Wei left after washing the dishes. Lu Sanyang sighed and started embroidering absent mindedly. She didn't usually dream nowadays. However, when she dreamed, it usually meant that her dream was going to come true. She didn't know if she could still change it. At noon, Lin Jin came. He told Lu Sanyang about the situation in River Village and wanted to ask Lu Sanyang if there was anything they should do. Lu Sanyang poured tea for Lin Zheng. Miss Lu, are we really not going to do anything? Lu Sanyang shook her head. No, the restless souls will leave once they have sought their revenge. Seeing how worried Lin Zheng was, Lu Sanyang explained to him. The resentful souls and those men were all blood dot related. They were just angry at being treated in such a way by their fathers, but they wouldn't kill their fathers. When Wei Shi went to arrest the men, Lu Sanyang would chant the scriptures to pacify the souls. After hearing the explanation, Lin Zheng was relieved. When he stood up, he said to Lu Sanyang, Miss Lu, in a few days, someone from the capital will come over to deal with this case. A psychic might come with him. Magistrate Wei asked me to pass a message to you and ask you to go with him. Lu Sanyang nodded. Okay. Lin Jing smiled at Lu Sanyang and stood up to leave. Ever since Lu Sanyang helped him face the demon he dreaded, he was no longer plagued by that dream. Chapter 78 Lord Su from the capital you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 78 Lord Su from the capital Lin Zheng was grateful to Lu Sanyang. For the next few days, Lu Sanyang did not go out. In mid-June, the weather was extremely hot. Madam Wei often brought back some ice cubes. Lu Sanyang used them to make all kinds of cold soup, and it was pretty cooling. When there were fruits, she could dry them in the sun and make some fruit tea. The people from the capital had already arrived in Yong County. As they arrived at night, Wei Shirlai asked Lin Jing to send a message to Lu Sanyang and ask her to go the next day. Lu Sanyang was a young lady. Her mother would definitely not allow her to go out at night. Lin Jing came with a message and left in a hurry. Lu Daolong passed the message to Lu Sanyang. Lu Sanyang nodded. She could go tomorrow. Meanwhile, the people from the capital rushed to River Village at night. After all, they also wanted to see the phenomenon. Therefore, without even resting, they got Wei Shirlai to take them to River Village. The person in the lead was the son of Marquis Su of the capital, Su Yinyu. When the report from Wei Shirlai was received, it had caused a huge commotion in the imperial court. The emperor was furious and handed this matter to Su Yinyu, who brought people over. My lord, River Village is over there. When we reach River Village, I'll immediately take you to see what is going on. The person who was speaking with his head lowered was the servant, Su Changda. Wei Shirlai frowned along the way. He had a bad feeling about this that Su Yinyu would do something stupid. It said that these people will lose their minds at night. How crazy can they get? Will they eat shit? I know dogs eat shit. Do they eat shit? 
Su Yenyu opened his fan and smiled as he spoke, as if he was very interested in what he was about to see. Dot Su Changda smiled obsequiously. I don't know either. When the time comes, I'll get someone to prepare it and see if they want to eat it. I heard that they're still conscious when they go crazy and will shout for help. Ha ha ha, interesting. Su Yenyu became even more interested. If not for the fact that he wanted to see how crazy these people were, he wouldn't have come here overnight. He hadn't had time to explore the fun things around Yong County yet. If his father didn't say that this mission would be easy, he wouldn't have come. All he needed to do was simply to bring the soldiers with him and arrest some townspeople. As River Village got closer and closer, Su Yenyu became excited. That must be River Village. Every house is still lit up. Apparently, it is true. When they reached the bridge, Su Yenyu got off the horse and was about to cross the bridge when Wei Shirlai stopped him. Lord Su, are you going to arrest the people now? Su Yenyu looked at Wei Shirlai and smiled. No, what's the hurry? I'm just here to take a look. I've never seen such an interesting thing in my life. I'll take a look and report it to the emperor when I get back. Magistrate Wei, don't be so nervous. You said in your report that there might be a mutation here. I also brought a master. Su Yenyu fanned himself and patted Wei Shirlai on the shoulder. Wei Shirlai frowned. Su Yenyu smiled. Magistrate Wei, I heard about you before I came. You're a very boring person. You can get lost now, I'll take charge of everything here. Su Yenyu gently pushed Wei Shirlai with his fan. Wei Shirlai frowned and watched helplessly as Su Yenyu took his men across the bridge and into the village. Su Yenyu had indeed brought two masters with him. They were dressed in white and had extraordinary auras. Sir, are we just going to let him fool around? Officer Zhou was furious. Su Yenyu and the others had already crossed the bridge. After entering the village, they must have seen the scene of the man from River Village going crazy. They laughed and said, so it's true. Someone, hurry up and get him a pile of shit, Wei Shirlai's face darkened. Forget it, let him be as long as he can settle this matter at the end. Su Yenyu's father was the Marquis, and his sister, Su Yenshue, was the favorite concubine of the Emperor. In all aspects, Wei Shirlai could not afford to offend this young man. Wei Shirlai exhaled. Lin Zheng and I will go in and take a look. We'll make sure he won't do something too stupid. You guys stay here. Officer Zhou could only obey. Wei Shirlai walked toward the village with Lin Zheng. When they entered the village, he felt a little unsettled. Some crazy men were crawling everywhere, chasing after their mothers or wives, praying to the heavens to let them go. Su Yenyu was dressed luxuriously, and it was obvious that he was not an ordinary person. When his servant, Su Changda, entered the village, he shouted. Lord Su is here with masters to save you. Kneel. When the villagers heard this, they immediately knelt down and begged. My lord, please save my man. Please show mercy. They were already hopeless because none of the witches or priests they hired knew what was going on. When it was dark at night, it was as if the men lost control of their bodies while still conscious. Even though they knew they shouldn't crawl and eat the pig food, they couldn't control themselves. Su Yenyu smiled and sat on Su Changda's back. He said to the two masters beside him, Master Kong Yu and Master Kongling, see what's going on with them. The two of them looked at the people kneeling and begging for mercy. They could tell at a glance that there was a problem here. Kong Yu nodded at Kong Ling. Kong Ling said to Su Yenyu, My lord, these people are being haunted by the vengeful souls who are controlling their bodies. Su Yenyu smiled. What vengeful souls? Are they haunting this village? Su Yenyu was especially interested in this kind of thing, but he wasn't a Daoist and couldn't see what the masters were seeing. However, when Kong Ling said that the reason why the men were like this was because their bodies were controlled by the vengeful souls, Su Yenyu was immediately excited. 
Chapter 79 Let me play for a while before dealing with them you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 79 Let me play for a while before dealing with them Kongling said, people who die with strong resentment will become vengeful souls. Su Yinyu clicked his tongue. I see. Then are these easy to deal with? Kongling smiled. They're nothing. It's not difficult to deal with them. Su Yinyu said with interest, it's not difficult to deal with. Kongling nodded. Not at all. With a few ghost expelling talismans, they could easily be suppressed. Other than making the men go crazy, the vengeful souls couldn't harm people at all. Su Yinyu smiled. If it's not difficult, let me watch the show for a bit longer before helping them. Su Yenyu had completely forgotten that it was also said in Wei Shirlai's report that the crazy men in this village were all guilty of killing their own daughters. No matter what method they used to kill, they were all murderers. Su Yenyu's interest was piqued and he had already gotten the servants to prepare the feces and urine. The servants did not dare to disobey. When Wei Shirlai came to Su Yenyu, he saw that Su Yenyu was already fooling around. Envy. Su Yenyu smiled at Wei Shirlai. Magistrate Wei, come, come. An unprecedented show is about to begin. This is all real. It's much better than watching the opera. Su Yenyu's servant held a bowl of feces and shit. Come, come, come. It's still fresh. Hurry up and eat. Su Yenyu laughed out loud. That's right, that's right. It's still fresh. Hurry up. I'll save whoever eats first. You heard it just now, right? You're being possessed by vengeful souls. The masters I invited are different from the ones you invited. Master Kongyu, show them what you're made of. Su Yenyu stopped smiling and pointed at someone with his fan. Kongyu took out a talisman from his pocket and held it between his fingers. He looked at the person Su Yen was pointing at. His lips moved, and the talisman seemed to come alive as it flew towards that person. When the talisman touched his body, the man cried out in pain, Ah, I'm on fire. But after two seconds, the man shut up and his body was under his control again. The man was overjoyed and quickly kowtowed. Thank you, Lord Su. Thank you. When the others who were still hesitating saw this, they seemed to have seen hope. They kowtowed to Su Yenyu. Su Yenyu smiled evilly. It's not that I don't want to save people. Didn't I just say that I'll save whoever eats faster? He had seen many dogs eat shit, but he had never seen any human eat shit. Wei Shirlai couldn't bear to look at the scene. It was extremely disgusting. Su Yenyu was probably disgusted as well. He waved his hand and said, All right, all right. It's so disgusting. Hurry up and deal with these vengeful souls so that I can convict these men tomorrow. He had already seen what he wanted to see. After his curiosity was satisfied, Su Yenyu felt disgusted. Hearing his instruction, Kong Yu and Kong Ling were ready to suppress the souls. However, the men who were gathered together suddenly ran away and scattered. As they vomited, they shouted. Lord Su, help! When Su Yenyu saw this scene, he was amused again. Interesting, interesting. Looking at the men who were crawling like animals, crying and screaming, Su Yenyu laughed out loud. Wei Shirlai frowned but he couldn't do anything. Lin Zheng stood beside Wei Shirlai and frowned, furious that Lord Su did not treat these people as humans. Kong Yu and Kong Ling chased after those who had lost their minds. Su Yenyu occupied a farmer's house while his servants went to fetch whatever food the farmer had. This family was angry but did not dare to say anything. Su Yenyu sat in the courtyard and took out some silver. Everything in your house today belongs to me. Once I leave, it will still be yours. There must be at least twenty tails of silver, which was equivalent to a few years of income for an ordinary farmer. The farmer instantly looked happy and said with a fawning smile, Lord Su, feel free to use my house. 
Wei Shirlai did not say anything. There were countless ways for rich and powerful people to have fun. What Su Yen Yu did was not the most horrendous. In less than two hours, Kong Ling returned and said to Su Yen Yu, My lord, it's settled. The ghost expelling talisman had dispersed all the vengeful souls. Su Yen Yu nodded. We'll stay here tonight. We'll capture them tomorrow morning and return to the capital. This place is disgusting. After having fun, he felt revolted wherever he looked. The servants cleaned up the rooms and cooked for him. The hundreds of soldiers he brought were also guarding the village. Su Yen Yu no longer had the mood to play around. Wei Shirlai heaved a sigh of relief. As long as Su Yen Yu could capture these men and convict them, Wei Shirlai couldn't less how he wanted to have fun. At midnight, Su Yen Yu was enjoying the most organic food fresh from the farm. No one in the village noticed that fog was slowly rising. As for the guard outside the village, when the village was shrouded in fog, they realized that something was wrong. Officer Zhou, Officer Zhou, look, there's fog rising up. It's so thick. Officer Zhou was a little sleepy, but hearing that, he immediately perked up. He rubbed his eyes and said, what's going on? Magistrate Wei is still inside. I'll go in and take a look. You guys stay here. It's too late. Look, the fog is already spreading over. The fog had already enveloped the entire river village, including the bridge. Officer Zhou looked at the fog in front of him and squatted down to touch it. Where's the bridge? Why can't I feel it? Chapter 80 Huge Resentment, Part 1 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 80 Huge Resentment, Part 1 River Village was completely enveloped in white fog, as if it had completely disappeared. Officer Zhou could not even touch the bridge. His voice started to tremble. Officer Zhou, what should we do? The constables were extremely worried. They had stayed outside and did not know what was going on inside. They did not know when the fog started. When they found out, the entire river village was covered in it. Now even the bridge was gone. If they didn't have the bridge, they could not even go in to investigate the situation. Dot officer Zhou retracted his hand and stood up. Quick, go and invite Miss Lu. She can help. Officer Zhou immediately got someone to invite Lu Sanyang over. In this situation, they couldn't wait until morning. Even though they didn't like Su Yenyu, he was after all a lord, and what was more, Magistrate Wei was inside as well. Officer Zhou frowned. He pricked up his ears, hoping to hear a sound from inside the village. But it was quiet, dead quiet. Officer Zhou cursed Su Yenyu in his mind. If Su Yenyu didn't insist on going in, Magistrate Wei wouldn't be trapped inside. Officer Zhou only hoped that Lu Sanyang would come soon. At this moment, every house in River Village was brightly lit. Almost every house was screaming. They looked at everything in front of them in disbelief. More than a hundred children were running to their homes, smiling. Father, mother, open the door. Ah, ghosts. There are ghosts, both men and women screamed in fear and fled in all directions. They all fled towards the village entrance, wanting to escape. When they tripped, they crawled on all fours. It was too scary. Those dead daughters, they were back. Was there anything more terrible than this? They collapsed and lost control of their bowels, but at this moment, no one had the time to laugh at each other. They only wanted to escape quickly. However, no matter how they ran, they returned to the village in the end. Su Yenyu frowned. What's going on outside? Why do they sound like they've seen a ghost? Changda, go out and see what's going on. Su Changda chuckled. All right, I'll go take a look at it now. Knock, knock, knock. Before Su Changda could leave, someone knocked on the door. Su Changda went to open the door and looked at the little girl standing in front of him. Whose girl is it? Take her back. 
If you disturb Lord Su's rest, you'll be punished. After Su Changda finished speaking, he ran to Su Yenyu's side. My lord, it's a child. Su Yenyu fanned himself with his folding fan. It's just a child. Take her to find her parents. He wouldn't go so far as to get angry with a child. However, the girl had already walked in and smiled. Father, mother, I'm back. Father, mother, hug me, the girl ran towards the man and woman in the corner. The woman screamed. Ah, ghost, she's a ghost. The man's expression changed. Help me, help me. She's a ghost. The man got up and ran, but the girl was faster and jumped onto his back. She wrapped her small arms around the man's neck and smiled. Father, carry me. The man staggered and felt his hair stand on end. He only wanted to run out and leave this damn place. Su Yenyu was stunned. What? Kong Yu and Kong Ling frowned. When they looked up, their expressions changed. The entire village was surrounded by resentment. They had never seen resentment so strong. Kong Ling said solemnly, Lord Su, it's not safe here anymore. Let's go out. They were really worried that Su Yenyu would be stupid enough to still insist upon staying and watching the show. Fortunately, Su Yenyu didn't. He was only stunned for a moment before he said, then, let's go. He was here to have fun, but he didn't want to put himself in danger. Although he didn't understand, he knew that the situation had gone out of hand. Hearing the screams outside, his body trembled. Wei Shirlai did not know what to say. He turned to Lin Zheng and instructed. Go and look at what's going on outside. Lin Zheng went out silently. The entire village was in a mess. Almost every man was carrying a girl aged around four or five years on his back. With a smile on their faces, the girls didn't look scary. It seemed like they were just playing a game. Lin Zheng returned to Wei Shirlai to report the situation. Kong Yu and Kong Ling's expressions were solemn as they escorted Su Yen Yu out, holding talismans in their hands. The two of them were afraid that Su Yen Yu would be injured. Once a villager approached them, Kong Ling and Kong Kong would hit them with talismans. If they were hit by the talismans, the girls on their backs would disappear. However, they could not find the way out of the village. Neither Kong Yu nor Kong Ling had encountered such a thing before. For a moment, they panicked as the resentment seemed to be getting heavier and heavier. Where did this grudge come from? Su Yenyu couldn't help but feel a little nervous. Can you guys handle it? What's going on with this village? Kong Yu had already broken out in a cold sweat. He frowned and retracted his hand to calm down. Kong Ling wiped his sweat. Lord Su, the resentment in this village doesn't seem to dissipate, and instead, it's increasing. It's a huge resentment. Unless we find the source, we have no way to break through the fog. Kong Ling turned around and looked at the villagers who were scattered everywhere. They were terrified and kept reaching out to grab their backs, wanting to pull the girl who was riding on their backs down. Why were they so afraid of their daughters? Kong Ling shouted at the top of his lungs, what did you people do? Why is the resentment so great here? Everyone was terrified. Master, help. Master, help. Su Yenyu was also a little angry. Magistrate Wei, what exactly is going on? Are you hiding something? Sensing that his life might be in danger, he panicked. He didn't want to die in this remote village in the middle of nowhere. 